Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to class. Uh, hope you had a good week so far. I know the uh, in person students were having exams, they had a written exam, uh, and it's like some of them were essay type, right? Essay type questions you had. Some of them had uh, multiple choice. Today's not their exam, so they're looking a little more uh, relaxed. <laughs> Yeah, there's a smile on our faces. Okay, we'll begin with the word of prayer. Uh, can I ask any one of our, uh, can I ask Andrew to lead us in prayer, please? If you can unmute your mic and speak loudly. Samuel, can you lead us in prayer? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Father God, we want to say thank you for this wonderful day that we are gathered to learn and to know more about you, God. Lord, we want to say thank you. Help us to learn more. Help us to be focused in what we are learning, O God, our Father. And Lord, I pray that your presence would be uh, with ma'am who is teaching of our Father. God, I pray that your hand would be upon her and lead her, O God, our Father, God. Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, that we would be attentive to and focused on what we are learning of God, Lord Jesus. I want to say thank you so much for your, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, uh, there's something called Anand. I don't know if he's part of the student. Uh, oh, the in-person student. So he's, oh, Anand is not bad for Okay, let's so asking for an enemy. Oh, he's not well, he's unwell. What happened to him? He was Again, all four. All of you are giving it to everybody else. Okay. Um, we will uh, look at chapter 7 today, dreams and visions. All of you had dreams last night. Mm -hmm. Some of you slept peacefully. Because of, uh, some of you, did you see yourself writing an exam in the dream? <laughs> you had a nightmare of an exam? Okay. Um, so we're going to look at chapter 7, dreams and uh, visions. Okay. Where is uh, Nina? Sean is also not here, right? Sean, Tina. Who else is not here? Anand. Okay. Okay, we are in a transition season where the Lord God has promised to, to pour out His Holy Spirit. Okay, because it says in the last days, in the book of prophecy that God gives in Joel. Okay, chapter 2, God says, In the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Okay, we also uh, read about this in Acts chapter 2, verses 17 and uh, 18. It says, in the last days, God says, and for the spirit of all flesh, uh, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream, dreams. Okay, and then in the last days, people shall also prophesy. So we are in the last days, we are in the end days, and there's going to be an uh, increased amount of visions, dreams, and prophecies. So all of you are going to get dreams and visions and prophecies, so get ready for it. Prepare yourself. How do we prepare ourselves? You know, firstly, we when we go to sleep in the night, we need to uh, ask, consecrate our minds to God. You know, we always consecrate our spirits, our wills, our emotions, our body, but we need to also consecrate. What's the meaning of consecrate? Ask God to sanctify our minds. Okay, so that we can hear what he wants to speak to us in the night. Just, so, uh, you know, dreams can come from three different ways. You know, one that can come from God. Second way, dreams can come from our own minds. And our own minds are occupied with your own things. Okay, when you're occupied with your exams, you can go speak anything about writing exams, what you've gone done, what you've done. Or when your mind is occupied with thinking about something throughout the day or the week, you can also get dreams based on Okay, so dreams are when your mind is occupied. It is also when God is speaking to us, also to demons, even demons. 
uh, kept put uh, dreams in our minds. And that is why that is called as bad dreams. When you get bad dreams, you know, uh, that is basically from a demonic uh, intervention. Okay. So does God speak to us in, in dreams? Yes. How do we know? We always are coming back to scripture. Psalm 19 was, sorry, Psalm 16 verse 7 says that, you know, um, God gives us counsel and he instructs us in the night seasons. Night seasons means what? During the night. During the night, what God does? He instructs us. How does he instruct us? It is when God speaks to our dreams. Okay. Even if you look at Job chapter 33, we are on page number 92. If you look at Job chapter um, uh, 33, we see that, you know, um, in verses 15 and 16, it says, in a dream, in a vision of the night, uh, when deep sleep falls upon men, when we are slumbering on our beds, you know, then God opens on the ears of men and seals their instruction. So what is God basically saying is that when we are fast asleep on our beds, slumber is deep sleep. You know, he, he speaks to us. He opens our ears. It's not our physical ears, but it's a spirit. Now, spirit man, a spirit man can hear, speak, uh, think, and feel. So, he opens our ears of our spirit man, and our spirit man can hear what God is saying uh, in a true um, dreams. Okay, so God, what, what, what does, why does God give us dreams? Why does he speak to us in our spirit man, in our spirit ears uh, during the night is because he wants to instruct us, he wants to guide us, or he wants uh, to prevent us from doing something that we are going to do something that is uh, wrong. Okay? So, um, you know, the dreams serve different purposes. We will look at some of the purposes that dreams serve. First of all, dreams are ways that God meets with us and encounters us. You know, there's a meaning of encounter, right? Is basically meeting and uh, speaking to us. So we see uh, in uh, Genesis chapter 28 uh, when when God meets Jacob, you know, uh, God promises him to a dream, you know, when he's running away, he God tells him, I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. So God is, you know, he's sleeping on that land as God says, I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are uh, lying down. Uh, you know, Solomon, he, in a dream, God um, asked him at night, uh, ask whatever you want and you will, I will give it to you. What does Solomon ask for? Wisdom. Why does he ask for wisdom? Why does he ask for wisdom? Yes. Yeah, sorry. To rule the people? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, to rule the people because he's a king, he doesn't know what is right and wrong, what judgments. So to rule the people, and so God is so pleased with uh, his, you know what he asks, and he just blesses him with um, wisdom. Okay, so uh, it is just God meeting with us. We know that God is real. He speaks to us, and how does he speak to us? One day he speaks to us is through dreams. Uh, also through dreams, you know what God is trying to do to us is, um, you know, he tries to encourage us. Okay, some of the dreams that God when he speaks to us in our dreams is basically to uh, encourage us. Now, when Paul was in Corinth, this is in Acts chapter 18, verses 9 to 11, Paul is in Corinth, and every day he's speaking in the synagogues for Jews, and you know, the Jews, uh, they don't want to believe in him, so he's so frustrated, he decides to go and speak to the uh, Gentiles. Okay, and God tells him in a, in a dream, he tells him, don't be afraid, uh, keep on speaking, don't be silent, uh, for I am with you, no one is going to attack you, nobody is going to beat you up, because, uh, you know, I have many people in the city, many people are going to hear you and listen to you, so don't be afraid, don't stop speaking, continue to speak. So this is basically, you know, God encouraging us to uh, so it's not basically God is teaching us, instructing us, guiding us, preventing us from doing something that is wrong, but it's also dreams are where God encounters us, he meets us, ways that he encourages us, and of course he instructs us and also um, uh, teaches us. So in, uh, you know, uh, to Joseph, you know, who was going to get married to Mary, in Matthew chapter 1 verse 20, you know, the angel appears to uh, Joseph in a dream and tells him, you know, don't be afraid uh, to take Mary as your wife because, you know, what is 
but conceived in her as of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so just basically, the Holy Spirit also instructs and uh, teaches us. He also uh, directs and guides us. Uh, for example, uh, you know, Joseph, uh, you know, God tells him, uh, don't go to, you know, back to your home place, go to Egypt because Helen is putting, killing all of those. And when Helen is dead, you know, uh, God tells him in a dream, he to go back to uh, Israel. Okay? We also see how God directs and guides us. Gideon, when the Midianites had come to fight against the Israelites, and Gideon was a judge in God and uh, appointed, he was very afraid to go and fight against the Midianites. Okay, and he was looking for uh, you know proofs that God wants him to go and fight against the Midianites. And then one night when he is walking around, he sees two men talking, and one of them then says, In my dream, I saw a big loaf of bread which rolling down and falling into the Midianite camp, and the whole camp was. Uh, this so the other man said, maybe your dream is saying that God is going to give us victory over the Midianites. And when Gideon hears that, he's very encouraged in the spirit. You know, he leaves uh, the meeting for a fight against the Midianites. He goes and picks up all his soldiers and says, hey, friendly, we're going to fight against the Midianites because God is going to give them into our hands. We are going to give them uh, back. How? Because he just heard a person's dream. Okay. So just God directed him and guided him go and fight against the Midianites. Also, the dreams God reveals our future. Okay, uh, examples in the Bible how God wrote to dreams that he gave to people, he guided them to the future. Jacob, okay. Joseph, yes. You know, Joseph, uh, he sees the sun and the moon and the stars all bowing down to him. And then he sees himself in the center with his sheep in the center. You know the sheep's right? When uh, you cut all the, the the grain stalk, you know, you cut everything and then they make bundles and they beat it for the, you know, hasan. What do you say, Timothy? You know, I'm sure you all have seen that. Okay, so uh, he sees his sheep in the center and all the other level sheep around him, that is his brothers, all bowing down to him. And so what is the interpretation of the dream? His brothers and father and Father said, you know, are we going to bow down to you? You are the youngest, you are the oldest, are we going to bow down to you? Okay, so that was a dream that God was telling him something about the future, what is going to happen. Remember when uh, Joseph was thrown into prison, what happens? You know, the baker, the king's baker and the cup bearer had a dream, right? And then Joseph, they were very troubled and so Joseph says, okay, you tell me your dream. So the cup bearer says that, you know, I was uh, carrying the uh, you know, uh, you know, wine to the king, grapes, and I saw myself squeezing the grapes and pouring it in the cup and giving it to the king. The baker saw that, you know, he was carrying bread on his head, in a, you know, in a basket. He was going towards the palace, and the birds of the air was eating up all the, the bread that was on his head. So what was the interpretation? It says in three days, you know, because the three branches of wine with the grapes, so it says in three days, you know, it says a cupbearer, you will be reinstated to your position as cupbearer with king. And he tells um, the baker that in three days you will be, you know, hung from a tree and you will, the birds of the air will eat your flesh. And it happened just like he said. And also we know that uh, when Joseph was thrown into prison, Pharaoh had a dream. You know, he saw the seven fat cows, the seven meat cows, uh, the seven fat grains uh, eating up the seven, uh, you know, the seven uh, wheat grains, eat, stock of grains eating up the seven uh, fat grains. And the seven lean cows, very thin, bony looking cows eating up the fat cows. Okay, so what was the interpretation? Um, you know, Joseph was called because nobody was able to interpret the tree. Joseph said, seven years of abundance followed by seven years of famine so seven years of abundance he tells the king you know store all the grains that in the seven years of famine can feed them and did the famine happen did the abundance happen yes there was abundance so much of wheat that they couldn't even keep a stock of how much wheat they were storing you know and then there were seven years of severe famine not only in Egypt but surrounding areas and people from all over the nations came to Egypt to buy grain because just because the king had his dream and because Joseph had the interpretation for the dream. 
So you see that even God can give you dreams about your uh, future. He can also reveal things. Uh, uh, here there's another dream about revealing the future in Daniel. Uh, Daniel chapter 2, Daniel chapter 4, Daniel chapter 7, Daniel chapter 2, where the, the king sees a statue, you know, you know, the top part was made of gold and the stomach and all was made of silver, and you know, the thighs and all was made of bronze and the feet was made of uh, clay. So that was one dream uh, King Nebuchadnezzar had. Another dream in Daniel chapter 4, he sees a tree uh, where the birds of the air nest and then the tree was cut down. Uh, then Dan Daniel chapter 7, where he looks uh, at Daniel himself, sees uh, the four beasts, which is talking about the whole time events. So all these dreams, uh, God is revealing something about the future that is going to happen, and we must interpret it uh, rightly, and you know, uh, you know, people have seen the four dreams. So God can even give you dreams about your future. So you don't want to just hear the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, the voice of the Holy Spirit that they learned about, but also to dreams and visions that God can speak to you. So he can reveal even things about the future. He can even reveal secret things to you. Okay. So remember uh, in Daniel chapter 2, when King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, uh, he said, I'm not going to tell you the dream, but you have to tell me the dream and the interpretation. And what did his officer say? No human being can tell you what your dream is. That only someone, God can tell you. So then they called Daniel and no, they came up with all the officers to death. Okay, so Daniel said, Don't keep the officers, you know, just this night, keep the time. And then he went and prayed, he and around Chandra, Keshek, and Abednego. That night, when he was having a dream, God revealed the dream and the interpretation of the dream. Okay, so he reveals the secrets of men's hearts, okay, to us. So we see that Daniel goes and tells the king the dream and the interpretation of the dream. Okay, so he can even reveal secret things to you, or God can reveal secret things to you through dreams. Are you all excited? Uh, all of you are dreaming now. <laughs> okay, uh, don't go to sleep. Okay, uh, I don't have a color physically, but uh, yeah. Okay, then the other thing is the two dreams God can correct and realign us. In here, this is about King Abimelech. King of Gerard, uh, you know, when uh, when uh, Abraham goes to Gerard, you know what happens? Abimelech looks at Sarah and she's so beautiful. And what's that? What, what does Abraham say? She's my sister. Yes, he's so scared to say his wife because he thought that the king would kill him and take his, uh, Sarah as uh, the king's wife. So the king brings Sarah to the palace. You know, but in a dream, the king had, uh, is showing a dream that, you know, this is not, don't take her as a wife because she's another man's wife. And then the king realized that this is, you know, Abraham's wife calls and says, why don't you lie to me? So God can even correct us and realign us, you know, to his will, to his purposes, uh, through dreams. Okay. We also see that, you know, he also alerts us and warns us, uh, the wise men. Uh, you know, Herod says, when you find the uh, Christ the king, when you find the king that is born, come back and tell me where he is. But when the wise men found the king, maybe Jesus, uh, in a dream, they were saying not to go back to Herod, but they went to another part and uh, they left. We also see that Laban, who's Laban? Jacob's uh, father in law. You know, um, Laban treated uh, Jacob and then God tells uh, Jacob it's time to. We go back. And then uh, when the man was not there, we, we had gone away to shear his uh, sheep, uh, comes back and realizes Jacob is left with his two children and all his, uh, and uh, you know, flocks and everything. And so he goes searching for him seven days. And, you know, uh, in a dream, God tells him, you know, uh, don't do anything to, don't speak to Jacob, good or bad, just let him go. Okay, so in a dream, God warns us. Uh, Joseph in a dream in Matthew chapter 3 verse 13 uh, tells God tells him go to Egypt, don't go back to Israel. And in Matthew chapter 22, 22 and 33, God tells him now leave Egypt and go back to uh, to Galilee. Okay, and then go to Nazareth. We also read in Matthew chapter 27, verse 19. Um, Pilate, we know Jesus is uh, going to be brought before Pilate um, for judgment. And the night before his wife has a very troubled dream, and she sends word to Pilate and says, Don't have anything to do with this man because this man is 
immunosynthesis. This is what I actually hear sharp. You have to speak a little louder, please. But that was not in a dream. That was physically happening. She could see that, you know, Moses was being killed and she realized that it was because he did not fulfill the circumcision which we had. He had not circumcised his two children. So she cuts on his skin and she puts it on uh, Moses and says, you are bright, you are a bright and good blood to me. But that was not in a dream. That happened in, in reality. Okay. Okay. So here we see that God wants us in uh, all these things. He reveals futures to us. He corrects us, aligns us, corrects us, leads us, encounters us, guides us, and leads us to uh, dreams. Okay. So we must be open to receiving dreams. Okay. So in the night when you go to sleep, no, consecrate your mind and say, God, I cleanse my mind from heavy, pure, uh, dirty, filthy things. Uh, you know, sanctify it, cleanse it. I cleanse it by the, the blood, you know, so that when your mind is uh, consecrated, God can speak through your mind, can give you dreams and um, visions. Sometimes our dreams and visions, uh, we can see pictures that are happening, you know, and it's very clear. You can, God can show you somebody, you know, that person being somewhere. You get an accident, or maybe God is born in you, something like that. Uh, sometimes you can see symbols, you can just see colors. You know, so what you can do is when you see symbols, colors, you can go back to the Bible and see what the symbols and colors mean. Really Some dreams, when you don't really understand, you can basically write it down. Okay, keep it uh, written down so that you can, uh, you know, later on you can, a uh, God will help you. And also, when you get dreams that you don't understand, don't just write it down and leave it and forget about it. Say, God, what are you trying to speak to? Holy Spirit, reveal to you. Explain to me. Because the Holy Spirit reveals the heart and mind of God to us. He reveals God's will to uh, us. Okay? Uh, and so we can journal our dreams as um, we went. Okay? Now, uh, we look at dreams, we look at visions. Uh, now, just like dreams happen when we are asleep. Uh, visions uh, basically happen when one is awake. Dreams happen when we are fast asleep. Visions happen when we are awake. But in both dreams and visions, we are basically seeing things. Uh, it's uh, in both dreams and visions, we are receiving messages from God. It is something that is visual. We see pictures, both in dreams and visions. But in dreams, we are faster asleep. Uh, in visions, we are. Yeah. We are okay. Okay, are you all okay? Okay, so to the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, uh, how do we receive from the inner witness of the Holy Spirit? True, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, how do we receive things? Remember, we learned last week all the eight ways through impressions, we just feel an impression. Okay, we also saw that God speaks to us through. Um, um, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit speaks to us. How does He speak to us? Audible voice and inner voice. That is through words. Okay. So when Holy Spirit speaks to us, it's through words. When we receive inner uh, witness, of the Holy Spirit is to uh, impressions. But when God speaks to us through dreams and visions, it is through visuals, okay? pictures. Uh, so there are numerous examples in the Bible where people saw visions that they're not fast asleep, but they could see it. One of them is Abraham in Genesis chapter 15, you know, when God comes to him and uh, God tells him, you know, I am I your shield, your, you know, your great reward. So Abraham says, God, great reward do I have? I don't even have a, uh, just let me finish this. Uh, I don't even have a son. You know, one of my inheritance is going to Kelly is a son. That is my servant son. And then God promises Abraham, no, it will not be your servant, but to your own body, to Sarah's body, you will have an offspring, you know. Uh, so God promises him, and that is true for vision that he sees. Yes, Sean? Ezekiel's vision, yes, right, yes. We can also see uh, uh, Jacob had a vision in Genesis chapter 46, uh, you know, where God tells him, go to. Egypt, that was true of uh, vision. Okay, Balaam, you know Balaam? Uh, the king had hired him to prophesy against 
Yes, so every time we went to prophesy against this trial, you know, the vision God shows him, you know, the prospect, you know, the lion and other vision he sees, uh, the lion and the, you know, so telling something about the uh, future. Okay. We also see that, um, you know, um, people see in visions, people see angels. Okay. Uh, you know, angels, they came to Zechariah in, in chapter one. Okay, and tells him that you know he and his wife Elizabeth are going to have a son, and what they're going to name the uh, son. We also see Cornelius had a vision. Remember, I was speaking about Peter and Cornelius in the last few classes. You know, Cornelius was a Gentile, and uh, you know, in the vision, he's at the duty of eight, and he sees a man from Joppa who's named Simon, uh, who's living you know, with the uh, by the sea, you know, and the uh, the angel tells send men to Joppa, uh, you know, to call for a man called Simon uh, and bring him to your house. So this is true of vision that he sees an angel and the angel is um, telling him. In Luke chapter 24, we read about this, you know, after Jesus was crucified, these two men who were walking on the road to Emmaus, and you know, Jesus uh, is resurrected and he joins these two people. And he's asking, we're talking about Jesus' resurrection and all those things that happened. So Jesus is getting into a conversation and he said, How don't you know? You know, I knew Jerusalem, uh, don't you know what happened? And then Jesus goes on to explain everything to them. And then these people say that, you know, this woman, they went all to the tomb. And then they don't see the body. And then, you know, in the vision, they see an angel. And the angel says, Do for the living among them, dead, he is already. Risen. Okay, so the, the women at the two walls in a vision see angels. Okay, sometimes uh, we can see into the spiritual realm. Okay, visions we can see into the spiritual realms. For example, when Elijah, Elijah was taken up, Elijah was there and he was able to see in a vision Elijah just taken up to heaven. So even in a vision, sometimes we can see into the spiritual realm. Uh, sometimes uh, we can also see, uh, you know, suppose in a vision I'm here, but I, I'm also in my, at another place where I can see what is happening there. I'll give you an example. Uh, remember Naaman was a Syrian commander. I've already told you about Naaman's example. The Syrian commander who was had leprosy. He came to Israel because the servant girl told him to Israel that there's a prophet there. And he comes and Elijah tells him, go to the Jordan River and took yourself seven times. Remember that? Last week also I gave you the example. And so he, he gets healed and comes back and he wants to be gold and silver and clothing. And Elijah refuses, Elijah refuses to accept it. Uh, but uh, Elijah's servant has it, he's what a fool my master is. So, you know, after some time he runs behind uh, Naaman. He says, you know, you know, some prophets have come. And uh, you know, it'd be nice if you can give me something so I can give them. So he gives him gold and silver and clothing. He takes everything, leaves in his house, and comes back to uh, Elijah. And Elijah tells him, What does he tell him? Was not my spirit with you? Was not my spirit with you? That means Elijah was there in his house, but his spirit was looking at what Gerasi is doing on the road, even as the event. So sometimes we can be here, but we can in our spirit man, and our spirit man can take us somewhere else in a vision and show us what is happening in the natural realm. Sometimes we can even see through visions in the spiritual um, realm. Sometimes we can just see into heaven, like Stephen, you know, when he was persecuted and uh, just before he was stoned, what does he see? He says, I see heaven open. And the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Father, and everyone screams blasphemy, blasphemy, and that's when they uh, stone Stephen to uh, death. So sometimes we can even see into the uh, heavenly um, realms. Okay? So sometimes we can even, uh, others are not able to see, but we can uh, see. Now, all this is not just for us to see in the Bible or read about it in the Bible. You know, you can also desire, I say, God, I desire to see dreams, visions, show me, I want to see the spiritual realm. You know, show me what is happening and things like that. And you know, God does hear and if you really you know, desire that we have a clean heart, a pure heart, our minds are contemplating, God can even show us things to take us in the spiritual realm or take us even somewhere naturally to show us what is um, happening. So God can give us visions to guide us and 
um, direct us. Now, there are different kinds of visions that we see in scripture, but these are not just, we're just going to mention a few here. This is not everything and all the ways that God works, he can always work on the box. You know, God can think of anything creative, creative ways that we can even, uh, you know, give us uh, dreams and visions. The first one we see in the Bible is about spiritual vision. Uh, example given there is Ananias and Saul. Now, when Saul uh, encountered God on the road to Damascus, he becomes blind. He's taken into the Damascus city. And Ananias, you know, the, in a vision, uh, you know, it's like a movie that we see. You know, he's actually seeing, uh, you know, he's seeing Saul, okay, and God is telling him, go to straight street, you know, and go to the house of Judas, and there ask for a man for Saul of uh, Tarsus. So it's like a movie that we see uh, in a spiritual uh, vision. And then when we see that, you know, when he exactly follows that, he's led to Saul, and how Saul, you know, his blindness is open, he's baptized, he's great. And later he's baptized into water. Uh, remember this example I gave you last week from Acts chapter 16, verses 9 and 10, when in God in a vision uh, shows a man from shows Paul a vision. In a vision, he sees a man, a man from Macedonia. Remember, man from Macedonia standing there and say, Please come and help us in Macedonia. And we see that Paul and his team uh, arise on the to uh, Macedonia to preach the um, gospel okay on page number 96 and top of page number 97 you know um, um, the pastor shares an example you can read that later the next way that we can receive vision first one is the first one the spiritual vision second one is through trance okay a trance is when you lose consciousness of the natural world that means I'm standing here, but I don't can't see anybody. I can't see this whole building, this whole hall. I lose consciousness of the natural then, and I'm able to see a spiritual vision. I'm able to see the spiritual realm. A good example of a trance is again this example I've given you two, three times when we were looking last two months last week. Also again, uh, the trance when Peter, you know, Peter was on top of the terrace. He was very hungry. They were cooking food for him, and then what happens? He fell into a trance. A trance means he's able to see into the spiritual realm. Okay. Oh, there's a lot of echo. Okay. Just give me a minute. Sorry, I saw that it was too late. Uh, what is the mic setting? I uh, change it to uh, okay. It's now microphone. So what do I change it to? Rob? Sorry, it's on default only, okay? but they're saying it's echoing too much. Remember, we changed it because we wanted to hear Larinda speak. That is, uh, microphone is right. Is this a zoom? Okay, so then what we'll do is we'll move this mic a little bit. Now, does it help, Trisha? Now, is it okay? Uh, Pastor, we can hear you, but in between like few words, we are not able to understand. Uh, I think that's because of the internet uh, connectivity is not too great. Uh, now is it okay? Yeah, it's better a little bit now. Oh, fine. Okay. Sorry, I saw your message rather late. I just got carried a minute to listen. Okay, so trance is when you know Peter sees this whole vision uh, in a trance. He's, he's lost consciousness of his world, but he's able to see into the spiritual realm. What does he see? A big white sheet, and that was what? All animals and clean animals, and God tells him, get up and kill. Okay? Um, so God was basically telling him, you know, go down. There are um, uh, men waiting for you. There are about, uh, you know, uh, three men, I think, waiting for you. Um, you know, go with them uh, and, and then we take you where you need to go and we can ask any questions. Two men, I think, uh, uh, take you. Three only? Okay, so first one, you know, God shows us the spiritual vision, second one, the dream, second, and the third one is true open vision. Now, open vision is when we don't see pictures or visuals, uh, we're able to see clearly into the spiritual um, realm. Okay, um, at the same time, we are aware of the 
natural world. So you need to understand trance is when you lose consciousness of the natural world. Okay, but open vision is when you are aware of the natural world. Okay, you don't see any visuals, but you're able to directly see into the spiritual world. But trance is when you see a vision because you saw, you know, she and animals and all, and he was not conscious. Are you able to understand the difference between trance and open vision? Yes, open vision, you're, you know where you are, you're able to conscious about the world around you. Uh, you don't see pictures of visions, uh, but you see clearly into the spiritual uh, realm. The example here is about transfiguration. Uh, you know, transfiguration, when Jesus went up to the mount, uh, he takes who along with him? Peter, James and John, and then they see Moses and um, Elijah uh, speaking, uh, you know, God and Peter God's voice. This is my uh, beloved son, in whom I am well pleased to hear him. So here what they see is basically an open vision. The conscious where they are, they know they are mounting, they're not seeing any visuals, pictures and all, they're able to directly see Moses and Elijah and hear the voice. Okay? Yes. So this open vision is similar to Open vision is uh, similar to spiritual vision. Uh, yeah, spiritual vision, yes, you, but spiritual vision, you see pictures and visuals. You see pictures and visuals, um, and uh, you know, you see with the eyes of the spirit, the spirit man, they're able to see uh, pictures and visuals. They're not directly seen into the spiritual. Okay? Spiritual vision. Yes? Got it? Good question. Okay, uh, so another example is Cornelius as well. You know, uh, before uh, Peter goes to Cornelius, we know that in a dream, uh, uh, sorry, in a vision, he sees an angel and he, he's, he knows where he is in his house. You know, he's literally seeing the angel. It's not a vision or a picture that he'll see. He's literally seeing the angel and the angel is telling him what to do. Send, you know, men to, uh, you know, uh, to Joppa, um, uh, to a man called uh, Simon Peter. Who's staying with the, you know, with another man called Simon the Tanner, um, whose house is near the sea. So, all details. But here, he's able to see clearly into the spiritual realm. It's not just dreams and not uh, pictures and visuals, and also being conscious about what is happening around. Sometimes, uh, the fourth one is uh, visions when you're traveling in the vision. When you're traveling in the vision, you're going to places. Okay, in the natural world or in the spiritual world in visions, but your spirit body soul is in one place. Now, my spirit body soul is here, but I am going somewhere else in the natural world and I'm going somewhere else or in the spiritual world. Okay, but where is your spirit soul and your body in one place? Okay, and you can travel to any geographical area or you know, you can go. You know, in the past, or you can go into the future. For example, it's Ezekiel. Okay, Ezekiel, he was uh, in exile with the Babylon, in Babylon, but God takes him to uh, traveling in visions. His body, soul, mind is there. You know, body is there. The spirit is there in in Babylon, but God takes him to Jerusalem and shows him the temple. Okay, so that is traveling in uh, vision. And also in Daniel chapter 8, you know, Daniel is in a vision, he's taken, and God is going to show him what is going to happen in the future, in the end times. It will be good to read all of these, um, you know, scripture passages. It's very interesting. Okay, so when you're traveling in a vision, basically your soul, your body, and your spirit is in one place, but you can see in another geographical area, or you can see into the spiritual but when you transport it in the spirit, your body and your soul is here, but your spirit actually travels in the land to any other geographical place or into the spiritual realm. For example, Paul was caught up in the second heaven, second Corinthians chapter 12. Okay, when he was caught up in heaven, how was he caught up? That was through the in the spirit. Okay, he in the spirit he went. Also, we see when John was caught up in heaven, when he was shown all about how heaven is, he writes the book of Revelation. That is also when his spirit went up to heaven. 
Okay, so that is being transported in uh, the spirit man. But sometimes we can also be traveling in the spirit, but our spirit, soul, and body is in one place, but we are able to just see like in a vision. Do you understand the difference? Okay, sometimes we are traveling, but we are traveling in the vision. Our spirit, soul, and body is in one place. We can go eat, travel to the spiritual realm or any geographical area. But sometimes we can even be transported in the spirit, which means. A spirit is taken up. A spirit is going, traveling to another geographical area or even traveling to heaven. Okay, so this is the difference between these. So these are five ways that we see in the Bible about how people see um, visions. Okay, uh, and we also saw about dreams. So be open to dreams and visions and ask God to show you and also give you the experiences that Peter and Daniel and Cornelius and all of the Joseph and uh, Jacob and everybody had, you can also experience that and uh, you know God can speak to you and guide you in. Any questions on this chapter? In the Bible, normally we have these Yes. So, all the this is a Then you can see. No, he was uh, he he was there physically because it says run, and then after the sun he was just taken up. Yeah, that um, that we really I can't really say what that was. It's a good question, uh, but he receives that in a dream, right, Philip? In a dream or in a vision, he tells him to um, to see that. I don't. I can check on that in my turn. I think we uh, we looked at it in Acts chapter eight, right? We looked at that about uh, in the previous uh, chapter, right? When we were learning about uh, the voice of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 8. Yeah, that's the voice of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit said to Philip. That was not in a dream or a vision. Acts chapter 8 is actually when he hears the voice of the Spirit telling him. Okay, so he's physically going there. Then he's taken away and transported to another place. Good question. Anyone else has any questions? Yes, Sean. Uh, Rin said, Philip, you know, when uh, this Holy Spirit tells him, go out on the chariot, go in the chariot, uh, that's it, tells him that. In Acts chapter 8, uh, Acts chapter 8 was, uh, Acts chapter 8 was 29, when the Spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake the chariot. That's all he gave him the instructions. And he sees a uh, when he goes there, he sees a utopian, utopian eunuch reading Isaiah, he's not able to understand. Then, you know, Philip uh, in, uh, interprets it to him. Sorry. You didn't understand what trance is? Sorry? Okay. What is your question, Sean? Okay, a trance is a trance is like a vision, but when you lose consciousness of your surroundings and you're able to see a vision, the pictures in the spiritual realm, that is called a trance. It uh, open vision is when, uh, like you know. Uh, what is the example of open vision? Open vision is when you know uh, when Peter, James, and John they go, they're not they don't lose consciousness of their surroundings, they know where they are, they don't even see pictures and you know visuals, but they're actually seen into the spiritual realm. That is an open vision. A trance is you you don't directly see receiving from the spiritual realm, but you're seeing visuals and Pictures, uh, but you don't you lose consciousness of your circumstances. That's trance. 
That's what John is when uh, he's a transported in the spirit. The spirit is transported in his sins. Trans can be for everyone. Won't be so yeah, yeah, you can. You that's why you need to be very careful. Uh, if it is a demonic dream, then you know it's very disturbing, it's very illegal. Uh, it can be even has a little amount of you know, <laughs> you know, filth and not clean things in that because you're basically looking at things and you're being seen visuals, images. Or the movies or series, whatever, and so you can see this. You're, you're, you're picturizing things. Any more questions? Interesting lesson, right? Dreams. This is, uh, chapter 8 prophecies. Um, you know, prophecies. Uh, how do we receive prophecies? The Holy Spirit, yes, these are basically messages that we receive from the Holy Spirit. Uh, do we see prophecies both in the Old and New Testament? Yes. Prophecies both in the Old and New Testament? Yes, okay. What is basically prophecies? It's telling, it's telling about the future. So, look at the uh, word of encouragement. Other people. Prophecies, we always think it is foretelling, telling something about the future. But look at what, what 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3 says. Very important. Can somebody read that loudly? But he who prophesies speaks with edification and so that of his own. Yeah, so what is basically prophecy? Is when you're telling somebody prophecy, you're comforting them. How are you comforting them? You're basically saying, hey, you know. They, they say, hey, God knows what I'm going through. He understands. He sees. You know, they see great comfort and love. It's also uh, edification. It's actually encouraging them. You know, God knows. He was building them up in the spirit man, their relationship with the God. It's also exhorting them. It's also building them up, strengthening them up uh, uh, spiritually. Okay. Uh, the word of God says uh, in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 20 and 21. Can somebody read that? Yeah, so it says don't despise prophecies. Don't say, oh, who's prophet? You know, I don't think he's a prophet. I don't think what he's telling me is right. Uh, he's just to my saying something. You know, it didn't happen at night. So it may not have happened, but this person may be telling you, God might be telling you to that person that something is going to happen in the future. So don't despise prophecies, but what should he do? Yes. You have to test prophecies. Just don't receive every prophecy that you receive. Test prophecies. Hold on to what is uh, good. Okay, so hold on to what is good. Leave, uh, leave aside what is not right. Okay, uh, what is not from the Holy uh, Spirit. Because sometimes prophecies can come from God, can also come through the person's natural mind or thoughts. It can come also to sometimes to demonic voices so we need to test prophecies because why because it's coming to a human person and they are not perfect okay so the best way to test prophecies is how what is the best way to test prophecies the word of god and also ask the holy spirit and to the inner witness of the holy uh, spirit see if your prophecy that you receive is in line with uh, scripture okay so we'll come back after the break and see how we can test prophecies okay Let's see you all after the break.